capital, Budapest, compared to, uh, to the international ones, even the generic ones in London or all around the world? Well, I find this very, very interesting indeed, because you say a small, a small little, little, um, little wine fair in the middle of Budapest. I'm, I'm thinking this is not small at all. It's quite big. It's quite complex. My first reaction was, how do I find everything? Because there, there's a many, many winemakers here. I love Hungarian wines. I think there's great potential, um, and this is a wonderful opportunity for me to taste a huge range of wines which I've never tasted before, and some which I have tasted before. I've just been having a, a wonderful taste of, of wines which I know in London, and being able to taste them here in Hungary against all the rest of the Hungarian wines is very revealing, very, very, very um, revealing in a good way. And as you said, it's a great place to intermingle with people and to taste uh, uh, wines. Um, well, you, you're, you're quite an expert, actually, in Hungarian wines. You're involved with, uh, lately with the Royal Toka as well, and, and, and you're doing a lot of business in Hungary. What is your thought uh, on Hungarian wine generally? What's, what's your impression now, today, uh, compared to the, in the past? And how do, you, how do you see the wines, Hungarian wines, in the future? What do you think on that? I think Hungarian wines have a great future. Um, I, I, I know from tasting wines all around Hungary that you can make some superb wines. I think that your main problem is international. I think that you are not promoting yourselves enough internationally. Um, you should be spending far more money on, on, on wine fairs, especially in London. We haven't had a an Hungarian wine fair in London for about three years. We used to have one every year in, in Covent Garden, yeah. then, it, then it stopped, and then we, then we had one not in, Hunk, not in the um, Covent Garden, one in one of the lovely old London, London, Guild, London Guild rooms, okay. and that was a once only. After that, there's been nothing. And I think you are not promoting yourselves internationally, as you should be. So yeah, I, I totally agree with you, actually. So that putting on, especially the London Wine uh, Fair, which is coming up in May, some people actually pulling out. There's a chance, there's an opportunity to actually move in to show the people the Hungarian wines. But Hungary is, if I may so, so 60,000 uh, hectare, roughly the size. What would be the approach? International varieties, indigenous varieties, a mix of both. How would you approach the whole thing? Obviously, you need a lot of money to put in. But what else uh, you reckon? How would you tackle it if you would be in charge in the, in the marketing government, uh, you're sort of tackling the whole? issue putting Hungarian wines name for them in Budap uh, from Budapest from Hungary out to London to the to big major cities in the world the problem is you you've got to have what's called a USP haven't you you have got to have a unique selling point and I think that's where your your indigenous varieties should be should be really promoted you've got to produce wine which which people will will recognize as being different Hungarian different superb I'm not in favour of, of, of the international varieties. Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, you can buy them from anywhere. You, everybody is making them, Chile, Argentina, Australia, New Zealand. What, what's different? You've got the opportunity of making these superb wines from Cake Francoche, for example, um, Kodaka. Um, uh, your, I love Furment, for example. I think Furment is a superb, superb variety. And I'm sure if you major on those and, and try and promote those more, that, that should be your future. So, so actually, you're speaking out of my heart, the indigenous and the Hungarian varieties would be a great way forward. And what's, what, what, is there any memorable wine, Hungarian wine for you, which you would say, okay, this is the one which I would, uh, as Hugh Johnson put it once, you know, I would buy a whole estate, you know, it would be, this is top mark is actually buy the whole estate. It was obviously Royal Toka in his case. But is, is anything such uh, uh, with you, David, that you say, this is the most memorable Hungarian wine, and if I could, I would buy the estate? Furmint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Furmint for from Tokai, Furmint from Eger. Um, superb. I think Furmint has a, is a lovely, lovely variety. Quite, quite unique and can, can produce some superb wines. So I, th I think Furmint, uh, and, and then in terms of the red, I'm, I suppose Cake Francoche is, is, is a superb variety as well. Um, I love Egri Bikavere. I mean, a good Bikavere is, 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 is a, again, it's different. 
and, and a, a good Egri Bikavea is a million miles away from bull's blood. <laughs> the terrible, the terrible old bull's blood. <laughs> well, David, uh, thanks a lot for your time and uh, I much appreciate uh, taking the time for us and uh, I wish you obviously a great time and uh, lots more fantastic wines here in Hungary and please do go out on the road, especially in London and, and do uh, uh, give the good vibes out for the hun people to, ta to taste more Hungarian wine and obviously to come to the country. I, I really, really appreciate your effort and, and time and working for, for Hungary and you know putting us on the map, on the world map basically of wine. Thanks a lot David. Thank you. Egg, 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 uh, sorry, I'm getting that one wrong. Uh, <laughs> you can say Ishten Ishten is the I, I, no, 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 no. I was, I was trying to say. Okay, okay, shake it,